All right, so my presentation, as being said, is going to be about immortality, sort of the genetic basis of it, using telomeres, which I've been informed that most of you had a lecture on it yesterday, but just treat this as revision. All right, so just to like clarify what I'm talking about when I mean when I say immortality, like immortality, invincibility, and invulnerability are often used synonymously, but they do mean different things. And immortality means that you lack the ability to die, essentially but you can still be harmed by external forces, say like if you got stabbed, it would still harm you. Uh, but in many iterations, especially in many stories of like ancient Greece, it's sort of an agelessness, and this is what I'm going to focus on, the agelessness of immortality in this. Invincibility sort of just means the opposite, like you have the ability to die but, uh, from like old age, but you just can't be harmed from external forces. And invulnerability just means you have no weaknesses, like you might say a castle is invulnerable or something. So yeah, uh, it de it's derived from Latin just essentially meaning deathlessness, for my like, aim meaning not and able to die. And this is how Google defines it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, the stories of it have spanned, it's from like early civilization and it's what separated the gods of like the Olympians and the Latin gods, like the Roman gods, from ordinary humans. And therefore, it's no wonder that since like the dawn of civilization, humans have tried to like rival the gods by becoming immortal themselves, because that's just like how humans are. They just want to do it. And as I said, like many stories from like ancient Greece are all about immortality, except. And uh, these normally focus on magic and alchemy and all this type of stuff. So, sorry about this, but there's a bit of audience participation. If someone came into this room right now and said, I can give you the chance to be immortal, would you do it? Put your hand up if you would. You can still die, though, right? <laughs> just if someone came in now and just said... Yeah, but it, just, yeah, wait, what sort of is this? The agelessness one. But you can die if you're stabbed. Yeah. That's probably about what I expected. Like, I don't expect many. Um, but we are actually quite close to this possibility. Right, so the human lifespan in developed countries, say if you were born 10,000 years ago, it would be about 30 years. Like you'd, that's how long you'd expect to live. And 100 years ago, if we don't take into account World War I, which really messes up the figures, uh, you'd expect to live to about around 50. But in the past two decades, if you've been born then, uh, it's more than likely going to survive for the past 80 years. And here's a graph of the US life expectancy. And this trend only follows if we assume that there are no major breakthroughs in ageing in like our entire lifetime. And the UK figures are slightly higher. And as you can see, like World War I sort of knocked it down a bit. <laughs> um, but should we assume this? Like, should we make that assumption? Because in the past few decades, we've learned a lot more about ourselves and the mechanisms that keep our body going than we have in all of human history before. Like before. And uh, we've also found ways to conquer infectious agents like malaria that have killed, that's killed over half the people who have ever lived. Like we have a vaccine for that now and we have tablets you can just take. And so people, well, a lot of people still die from malaria, but in the developed world you don't. And these advances in medicine have greatly increased human life expectancy in the modern era. And these types of discoveries are constantly in increasing and more and more every day at an exceedingly growing rate. So with that in mind, it seems almost stupid to make that assumption. But that being said, ageing isn't recognised as a disease like many of the things that we've developed to stop death and extend human life which most of the research is currently focused on, like antibiotics. It's just seen as like a process that everybody has to go through. Like it's not something that's like subjective, it's just like everyone. Uh, and for the first three decades of your life, you don't want to stop it because it essentially makes you better. Like you get bigger, you get faster, stronger, fertile, more intelligent, <laughs> and everything you need to like ensure survival of the species. Um, but soon after this, like the benefits that aging gives start to U-turn and essentially the opposite happens, the body begins to degrade and becomes weaker 
and we even lose cognitive function, so we become less intelligent as a result of this. But why does this happen? Uh, scientists have found that many, recently, many fundamental processes that they believe to cause aging. Like, essentially, we age at the macroscopic level, like, as we are as like, people, because our cells age at the microscopic level. Uh, this is Leonard Hayflick, which is what I was saying, like, well, when I said recently earlier. A lot of the research was done in the 60s, but it wasn't understood until the late 90s or is still being worked on. Uh, he came up with a concept as the Hayflick limit in 1961 while studying telomeres of human fetal cells. And the Hayflick limit, that which he coined, is the normal of times the cell can divide before becoming senescent, which just means that it's not able to divide anymore. And that's about 40 to 60 in humans, so we normally take an average of 50. Um, but what stops cells from being able to replicate forever, as was previously thought before Hayflick's research? Well, we have these things at the end of chromosomes called telomeres, which are essentially the version of aglets on your shoelaces, the little plastic thing that stops the end from fraying, and like, it makes it more stable, it stops it from splitting apart. Uh, and it also stops the chromosome ends from sticking together, which is a very, very bad thing that would, hap would happen if that did. And uh, every time a cell divides, it loses about 200 base pairs off the end, uh, uh, of the telomere every time my mitosis so every time it's replicated but this is just due to the consequences of the mechanisms involved which I'll not go into now uh, so therefore it's sort of like a, a biological clock the shortening tells how many the cell how many times it's divided and when to stop replicating and to become senescent and this happens when the telomeres become too short and recent studies have found that there's a very, very strong uh, correlation between the accumulation of senescent cells and unfavorable byproducts, such as uh, reactive oxygen species that age the cell, uh, which eventually die without producing any further progeny, which means that no cell comes to replace it. Um, so the next logical step would be finding a way to lengthen the telomeres, obviously. Uh, or just stop them shortening altogether and allow them to replicate forever unhindered and allow the cells to live forever. Uh, and as it turns out, our bodies do have necessary uh, mechanisms to do this. Uh, and it uses an enzyme called telomerase, which you can see in the corner. I don't know if everyone will understand it. I sort of do. <laughs> but, I don't know. Uh, so this is just a bit about telomerase. You can see a uh, sort of working if in the side. Uh, the enzyme helps replace the lost sections of the telomeres caused by the replication by adding the bases back. Um, and it works at a certain rate depending on how much of that telomerase there is in the cell. And in mammals, it doesn't work as fast as the degradation system, which means that eventually the cells still will become senescent. They'll have to stop dividing eventually. But it should be noted that more recent studies have shown a link between diet and exercise, as well as stress levels, on the activity of telomerase. So the fitter you are, the longer your telomeres are. And defects in telomerase production uh, have led to premature aging syndromes. So this further establishes correlation between telomere length and aging. Um, but other organisms can use telomerase differently. A minute number of organisms that we actually know to be immortal is in the way of uh, agelessness and unlimited replicative potential. Like some jellyfish and many lobsters uh, are such organisms. Like these organisms continue to grow over time and can even revert back to juvenile stages of development if they, should, if they wish. And their cells have really large tel uh, telomeres that do not deteriorate like ours do. Uh, and their telomerase helps repair all degradation so they stay about the same length. Meaning that they only ever die due to like being eaten. Or <laughs> <laughs> Which is not the best way to go. But yeah. So why are telomeres not like the lobsters? Well, it all comes down to the C word. 
as it turns out, many people do have cells that do this. But the problem is that these cells are cancer cells. And many cancers are caused by upregulated uh, telomerase activity, which allow the cells to just divide unhindered forever. Here you can see a cancer cell on the bottom uh, right there. And this is the problem with cancer, like the fact that the cells continue to divide without stopping, like, and create further and further cells that do this. And that's the, essentially why cancer is such a bad thing, such as HeLa cells, which are cells that, if anyone's doing work on human cells in like labs, will probably be using these. And these have been replicating since the 1940s. And they came from a cervical cancer. Uh, cells. So does aging actually protect us? Because in a weird way cancer cells are sort of the immortal cell line that are inside many people and maybe this is why aging exists altogether. Like telomere shortening may be a very good reason otherwise cells will become cancerous and it reduces the chance that like damage such as mutations in the DNA don't get passed on to further cells which could uh, cause more damage further down the line and like to the ne next generation. But say you could stop the cells from becoming cancerous then what would you uh, and keep the telomeres from shortening then what would happen? Well research on mice has been going uh, has been conducted in the past few years uh, and uh, that limited the degradation of the telomere and stopped uh, accumulation of reactive oxygen species in the cell, which are just things that damage the DNA and are just like created in the cell as a byproduct, which we don't really want. Uh, and the results from this study are fairly promising. Uh, the life expectancy of the mice rose by 52%, which is the equivalent of a human that's uh, living to 120 years, assuming it was about 80 that you were going to live anyway. And this is a promising result, but there was a uh, fairly severe trade-off. The uh, mice entered a feeble state much earlier than the control group, which is not an outcome anybody wants, because, say, if you turned 40 and you were like what an 80-year-old is today, you wouldn't want that, if you, especially if you were going to live to 120. But there were many inadequacies in the study, so many people dismiss it on like, both sides of the argument, like, the way that the mice might have been treated and the ways that like, they kept being injected with different chemicals could have contributed to this feebleness. So take from that what you will. So immortality, are we there? A telomere is the answer to it? Well, short answer, no. But that being said, the field is ever advancing and many steps have been taken in the right direction that give promising results. Okay, so with what, everything I've said, do you think immortality would be achievable in our lifetime? Through like any method? No, nobody. No, well, that's sort of what I think as well. The <laughs> immortality will not be achievable for anybody alive today. But I don't think it's like the impossible dream, like as in the Greek stories of magic and everything and alchemy and the Philosopher's Stone and all that that have been in the stories that provide immortality. And if it's not through like things like telomeres, it could be through another system, such as transplanting your consciousness into a computer and living forever like that. But I am 100% certain that the life expectancy that's governed by the confines of today is not the day that you're going to die. Okay, so any questions?